What's going on everybody and welcome back. So in this one we're gonna do another vlog, believe it or not. I got some stuff to do to the truck. I have to fix a water leak. It's been leaking for far too long. It's nasty. Um, I hate water leaks because everything gets all gross, the carpets, and I don't know why I'm too late. I'm lazy because it's not something that I can fix the right way, the windshield. It's the windshield that's leaking. I'm almost positive of it. Um, I guess I should try to diagnose it. I think I'm gonna pull the pillar down and partially the headliner as well and see if I can just see um, where the problem is exactly. I don't know if I unlocked the truck yet, but I think it's this part of the windshield right here where this, this molding's coming out and I think that somehow the water is getting in there. I mean, I don't know. I think this thing might have had a glass put in it at one point. I'm not sure. It looks kind of like the factory glass. Um, but I see at times I have water spots that they come running down this way on the inside of the windshield it, down into the dash. Now that can't be good. There's water getting into the dash somewhere. So that's not good. And then on the other side over there, I think it's coming in pretty heavily in the corner because the whole floor mat's wet. I don't ever have a wet mat on my side, but yeah, it's locked still. But I'll get the keys. But uh, yeah, it, it always ends up leaking. I think it's coming down the pillar here and it, it could be harming the tweeter too. So I gotta pull these pillars off. I, th these tweeters are not correctly, you know what I mean? They're huge for this pillar. They don't fit that well. So that's why I kind of have been avoiding doing anything with the pillars, but maybe I should uh, just have a glass put in it. I'm not sure if I should do that. I was thinking about just trying to caulk it up. Uh, if it does turn out that it's the XM antenna, I'll take that off and I'll put some a bead of something in there. But, you know, I might just, I'm thinking about taking the molding off, just running a nice bead and then just jamming the molding back in there. And hopefully that just alleviates the water leak. I could run it down here too. I've never taken one of these side moldings off. I feel like you're supposed to have the glass replaced to take this off. I don't know if I'm gonna wreck anything with this. Probably, it's probably not supposed to come off. So I don't know if I'm gonna run any sealant in there. I don't know if that's the problem. I, th I think it's just up top, but I may have to uh, get a hose on it and run some water in there and, and peek my head up in there and see what's going on. I'm gonna have to have somebody help me. Um, but yeah, hopefully I can get it figured out because I hate water leaks. Nasty. So what you're looking at is the bottom of a partially finished pizza oven made from perlite and concrete, uh, specifically Portland cement mixed together. And that's like the outer layer that we put around a medicine ball. Um, so it's pretty, it's a pretty crazy project, but we we're doing it with my brother and, uh, you know, things kind of got a little crazy lately with what's going on with him, but, uh, we're still trying to finish this thing and we put too much, I'm not going to say who it was, but it wasn't me <laughs> and, uh, that's all I know, but we put too much of uh, this refractory cement on here and it ended up not drying so we just kind of banged a bunch of it off in like a big sheet and it was all wet underneath so I kind of just re-smoothed it. It doesn't look the best but it also doesn't really look that bad and it's also the inside of the pizza oven so who really cares. As long as it's covered with refractory cement which is the goal I think it should be fine. So we'll start to let this dry now and we'll see how this comes out. I know there's like a bit of an edge. You could always try to smooth the edge a little bit more um, in the future with something, but I don't really think it looks that bad. This is all part of the area that, that I did, which is nice and thin. Somebody else was going really thick over here. Didn't work out so well. So, it's a work in progress, but that's, uh, that's another thing we're working on. This is all the uh, stuff we took out. But, yeah, I wanted to show you guys in, uh, in high definition what the old turbo kit looks like on this thing. So, there's a turbo. Obviously, I haven't shown the truck in a while, but this is the setup on the truck. It's a uh, 03 Avalanche 1500 and has 5.3 in it, 706 heads, which is, uh, you know, the, I think, smallest uh, CC head. So it, like, has the highest compression. So that's cool. Um, 
always good to have higher compression plus the turbo you know so we got four inch downpipe coming out of the turbo here which has my wideband in it and that goes all the way down to a stock truck exhaust uh, off of like a 2020 6.2 uh, Denali or you know it was a 6.2 Chevy but it has a basically a Denali engine in it and uh, yeah so it flows pretty good it still definitely is a little bit lacking on power through the exhaust when you open up the cutout there's a cutout underneath when that opens you can definitely feel the truck picks up and their fuel ratio gets to where it's supposed to be but it runs way, way, way rich if the exhaust is all closed off but uh, anyway yeah, I've been having some tuning things going on with it. I gotta break the laptop out and try to fix that. I'll try to show you guys that whenever I get around to it. But is the build the build's been really solid. It's been like a year since I've had it on the road, uh, since I completed it. But yeah, it basically goes down and around from the other side and comes up in the back here, and then it ends up running all the way into this manifold, which runs up into the the turbo here with this custom little. Uh, up pipe flange I built wastegates down there and dumps back into um, right back into the exhaust so when the wastegate opens it still runs through so this thing is totally quiet it just is all turbo noise it's just all whistling from the front when it's ripping by so it'd be cool to get some videos of this thing ripping uh, it's definitely gonna be my winter vehicle it's all I'm gonna drive in the winter I'll park the Honda um, probably gonna try to find a, a place this winter to live so maybe move the Honda there once I get, if I have storage there, you know, and uh, situate that when it happens. But this is going to be the transportation for the winter. So I got a couple things planned. I got a high output alternator I want to put on here. That's uh, possibly broken. Possibly might work. I don't know. I have to try it. And they say you need a smaller belt. So I've been reluctant to put it on. But I think I'm just going to throw it on at some point and see if it works. If it does, that's awesome because I kind of need one with the sound system and everything. And this. This battery, this AGM battery, really demands uh, to be charged, you know, because the system can drain this battery really well. And uh, while I'm driving for a while, it'll stay charged, and then the charge level will come down as I'm, dr I'm driving, and the alternator can't keep up. So I think the high output will will help it. But yeah, otherwise, I got everything all torn apart on the inside here. So I ripped apart the whole interior pretty much. Not really. So just this pillar I took off. I think that's why this is peeling because it's getting wet. So I think it's just leaking on this side because it's when I park it when the nose is down to the right. Uh, that's when this whole mat area gets full of water, which is all full of water. You can see how wet it is. I got to try to air out now, but yeah, you can only do so much. Um, so yeah, just going to try to air that out and find this water leak i was thinking maybe have uh, somebody spray the hose at me while i'm in here just to make sure i know where it's coming from that way i know where to seal which is probably you know like i said up here so i'm gonna get the hose going here and uh yeah we'll just leave it like that and we'll see if that's where the leak is so all right y'all so working on the next phase here it's been a couple of days and i'm back at it so i took a uh, little brush, some soap, scrubbed up in here, tried to get rid of, you know, all the grime in there. I ripped the molding out. I got that sitting over here in the sun. I'm going to try to reshape it back in there if it's nice and warm. It's not really getting that hot, but if it's nice and warm, figure out a better shot at getting it in there. So I'm going to get that window weld fired up. I'm going to get a blowgun, blow it all out. But I can tell it's definitely the windshield because the car is full of water. The whole dash is all wet, <laughs> and it all came in right up here, so good to know. Once I get that fixed, I should be able to re-glue the headliner, and maybe it'll stay, and uh, we'll stop getting water in here. So, yeah, I'm going to just run a bead along the whole thing. Looks like I've been getting all water in my remote start in my mirror. Maybe that's why my mirror doesn't work half the time. It's full of water. <laughs> so, yeah, that'll be good. Definitely fixing a lot of problems here. The mirror's leaking. Mirror's full of water. It's always good. So, yeah, just yeah, all kinds of water in here. So yeah, I'm just gonna hopefully fix this, and uh, that's the plan for today. So I got this window window weld. Basically, it's like generic, I guess. I don't know. I got it for free, so that was 
good. The uh, parts manager, she said it's expired, so I said I'll take it. She can't sell it, so looks like it's bad. It's bad for you. Danger. Uh, oh, hazards, skin reaction, asthma symptoms. Nice. Sounds like good stuff. So that's that's how you know it's good. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take this tip off. There's a thing I got to puncture, and then. My dad's currently sawing blocks with a chop saw for for the pizza oven. But uh, I went up, cleaned everything out as best I could. Um, it was all rotted up in here. I don't think I showed you guys. But uh, essentially, inside of here, I was able to clean it all up. I don't know if you guys are getting inside of there. Um, probably tough for you to see. But it's all rotted in there. And uh, urethane's all peeling. And that's where the water's getting in. So you'll probably see when I was washing it all off, the water got all over my dash. Um, and it came in over here too. You can see all these drips here and everything. This is all from the water coming in. So that's why the whole passenger footwell is all wet. And I had to shampoo the other day. The floor is starting to rot. You know, over here it's all starting to rot. So it, it's just, if you don't fix these things, it takes its toll. So just got to keep up with it. Hopefully this fixes it for a while. Um, yeah, he's going to be at that for a while too. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this with what I got to do to it. And then uh, we'll probably work on something else for a while. But I've been meaning to fix this because I keep getting water in here.
what's up everybody so I kind of messed up the weekly thing I've been a little busy but uh, you know it is what it is given the circumstances I promise I'm doing the best that I can and I know you guys understand but yeah take a look take a look at what we got here we got a problem so I think we got some oil leaking on the exhaust slash on the turbo and it's making quite the smoky mess here so we're looking at all kinds of smoke under the hood while I'm driving, which is like, no bueno. It's kind of annoying. Yeah, you see we got oil pooling all in there. I get it to focus on what I want. Yeah. So yeah, that's all oily. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if this, this seems loose, but I don't think that's it. I don't know if this, this thing failed internally. Oh, wind's blowing my way now. Gross. Yeah, so, I don't know if that's been going on for a while. I know this thing has a lot of issues now. I, I'm pretty much ready to replace the turbo. I think it's the turbo that's been smoking um, out the back when I first start it. At least that's what I hope. It could be the motor. I don't think so, though. It's, it's mostly refreshed. Um, and it seems like it only does it after I'm on diesel for a while, after it's really cold in the morning. And then once I uh, get into the throttle, it blows a big smoke cloud, and that's it. So, yeah, I don't know. I want to try to fix this oil leak and uh, keep it on the road for this, this season, and then I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with it over the winter, whether I uh, get another motor uh, and get that thing ready. I'd like to get another motor and start building that and just, you know, maybe next season just turn this thing up and see what we can do with this stock motor next season on this turbo. On this setup, even though it smokes, it just still runs, so why tear it down? Unless there's like a hole in the block is the way I see it. Because I'm not looking to get anything for this motor. It's a really high mileage motor. I'm not going to sell it to somebody. Especially not knowing whether or not it's what's burning oil or if it's the uh, or if it's the turbo. So I'm going to try to see what's going on with this drain. If it's loose, I'm probably just going to take that uh, coupler off of the charge pipe. So I can get a better access and see what's going on. So guys, I'm out here late at night working on the Honda. Um, not really. I just came back out to film a clip. I worked on this thing like hours ago, but I did figure out a few things. So for one, the oil feed was loose. I was right. It's a compression fitting. So uh, it's hard for you guys to see. Um, I had the whole thing apart earlier, but basically this guy right in here is a compression fitting. So he cranks down on that flange there. And when you tighten him down, everything will... Um, it, it basically pushes the, the nipple of like the fitting. It's like tapered into the, the ball and seat of this like uh, pin that goes down. And that is just a collar that tightens around. I don't know if that made any sense. It sounds like nonsense to me. But basically it was loose. So it was leaking. So I've tightened it and I fixed it. Because before it was like wobbling and rocking, but now it's good. So these things, once you get so many heat cycles in them, they just loosen up. I also found out that my wastegate was loose, which is funny. The two Allens that go into the manifold was totally loose. And that explains the puffs of smoke. If you go back to the Honda Fest video, and I was ripping, and I was ripping leaving Honda Fest, it was smoking out from under the hood. And that definitely was from that leak there when it was popping and banging. It was sending smoke out of there. So 
Definitely still burning oil, I think. It's gonna continue to burn oil in the morning. I don't think that's the issue. I think that's the seals and the turbo. But it was smoking in the engine bay a little bit, which is stinky. And also, it was leaking exhaust. So hopefully the fixes of those two things will make it uh, more comfortable to drive. So I'll drive it in the next few days and we'll figure that out. But also, I tightened this motor mount um, over here. This one on the right side. See all the rust around there? That's how you can tell something's loose. I saw all the rust and I was like, it's got to be loose because um, when, when you have the metal shaking around, it will create like a fine dust, uh, fine rust dust. You'll see that in like U-joints and stuff like that. So that's why I saw that and I was like, that's got to be loose. So hopefully this camera's working out and the zoom's pretty good. I think it's amazing. I'm really enjoying filming with it because it just looks so good on the camera at least. I hope that it looks as good um, in the edits. I have to watch back the videos and... and uh, see how everything's going with that but yeah super stoked about that and all the fixes that I did so yeah just trying to keep this thing running at this point I got a lot going on in life but yeah that's pretty much it I don't know if I did enough in these two clips or said enough but uh, yeah we're just you know we're just hanging in there trying to get things figured out I ended up not going to uh, that show I was gonna go to broke east just because of everything going on. I just didn't have the time. I was looking at houses and stuff instead. So, yeah, just major life things going on, guys. So I'm trying to hang in there with the videos, but things are uh, things are definitely crazy. But yeah, everybody, thanks for watching, and uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this content, and uh, I'll keep trying to bring it out as much as I can. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to see more. Like the video. Uh, check out the merch, which I have to update very shortly but yeah thank you guys all of you for watching and uh, peace i'll see you in the next one